When Hana Var Eight Yar Old by Catherine Peabody Gerling. This is recorded to celebrate the eighth anniversary of LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Were you a little girl, Hannah, when you came to America? I asked. No, she replied, letting her sewing fall in her lap as her grave eyes sought mine slowly. I var a big girl, eight year old. Eight years old? How big you must have been. Can you tell me about it, why you came? The recent accounts of people driven to America by tragedy, or drawn by a larger hope of finding a life to live in addition to earning a living, had colored my thoughts for days. Have all immigrants, the willless leaden people who pass in droves through our railway stations, the patient indifferent toilers by the roadside, the maids who cook and mend for us, the girl who sits sewing with me to-day, a memory and a vision? Is each of them in some degree a Mary Anton? So I closed the magazine and asked her, a big girl eight year old she said oh well hannah explained in old country if you are eight year old and comes younger children in the family you are old woman you gotta be or who shall help de mother yes did your father and mother bring you i continued probing for the story no father and mother were dead my aunt my father's brother's wife she came for us. It cost her twenty-eight dollar, but she do it. But surely you can't go to Sweden in return for twenty-eight dollars. Seventeen year ago, yes. But, of course, you must take your own providings. It don't require much. Hannah's shoulders drew together expressively. Madam knows she is apt to miss her appetite at sea but too well i shrugged sympathetically then we both laughed i can to tell you how it is i came on america but hannah waited for words to express her warning it will make you a sharp sadness please i don't know if i can tell it to you good but i tell it so good as i can my father he was swedish fisherman but hone his boat and go away by weeks and weeks and sometimes comes strong weather and he can't make it to get home quick my mother she was german hannah hesitated and then in lowered tones of soft apology added she was a very pretty woman var three children more as me olga var five year old and hilda three and jens well jens var just a baby suppose yar and half we live in a little house close on by the sea it is just a little house but it can to have a shed with a floor of stone the door of the shed is broken so it is like a window made out glass the house is close on by a big dock where in summer time comes a big excursion steamer mit suppose hundred tourist people who climb on the mountain up the road. My mother, she sell them hot coffee, also bread and cheese. But that is not the reason why we live in the little so lonesome house. It is the big dock, is the reason. My father, he can to come home from late fishings, without needing that he shall walk on the roads. In Sweden, in winter, the roads swallow snow till it makes danger some to you to walk, because hides holes to step in. We live there all summer, but in late autumn my father, he say, What about the winter? My mother, she say, I don't know, but anyway, we try at once. Then my father, he go away in his boat, and my mother, she get bad cold, and comes sickness on her. And then she couldn't to keep care on us, by reason she is too weak. She lay on the cot in the kitchen room, and watch on me that I shall learn to keep care on the children. But what did you live on? How did you keep warm? Oh, is plenty fuel. 
and we make hot stew of dried meat mit rice and raisins one day my mother she say to me hana she say you bein a big girl i must to tell you somethings you father is very late it seems and winter comes now i cannot to wait much more it is soon i got to go you mustn't take a fear of me if i come all white like the snow and don't talk me you any more the little children they will take a fear and cry i cannot to bring a fear on my little children so see tell me what i shall do i shall close both her eyes up and tie her hands together and lock the shed door the shed door yeah hannah had resumed her sewing her thread fairly snapped as stitch fell by even stitch with a monotonous rhythm in quiet uneventful tone she continued so one night pretty soon she make that i shall bring her best nightgown and help her mit to put it on then she kiss the little children in their sleepings and she sit on a stool by the fire and say i shall put yens in her arms she try to rock back and forth and she sing on him a little hymn but she's too weak and i must to take him then she put on me a shawl and tie it behind under my arms and she lean heavy on me and we go out into the shed my mother she do her bare feet on the stone floor she have used but her nightgown on but it is her best one with crocheted lace at the neck and wrists she tell me i shall put the ironing board across the two chair seats but it is too heavy and she shall try to help me but comes coughing on her and she must to hold on by the shed door she look out across the road and the mountains all mit snow white and mit moonlight cold and blood is on her lips but she wipe it away mit a snow bunch well anyway we do the ironing board across the chair seats and i spread a white sheet and put a head cushion and my mother lie down and i cover her mit a more other sheet over oh mother i say let me make some warm coverings on you no she say so soft that i listen mit my ear i must to come here while i yet have the strength but i want to go quick away and in the cold i go more quick oh hannah she say my big daughter you are so comfortable to me so i hold my mother's hand pretty soon it comes cold i clap it mit mine but it comes more cold i crumple it up and breathe my hot breath in it but it comes not warm any more so mit my father's sunday handkerchief i bind her eyes like if you play blind man mit the children and mit an apron string i tie her hands together then i go back and make my hands warm in the kitchen room and i take the comb down off the string and i go back to my mother and make her hair in two braids like as i did all when she was sick my mother she half very strong hair it is down by her knees on and so yellow so yellow as a, a copper tea kettle it could to have been red but it just are not then i lock the shed door and crawl in bed mit the children to make me warm next day i tell the children that mother is gone away they cry some but pretty soon they shut up anyway it is so long she have lain on the cot in the kitchen room that they don't have to miss her so i keep care on the children and play with them and some days go by comes stronger weather mit storms of sleet and snow and the wind sob and cry comes nobody on at night when the children are sleeping i unlock the shed door and go to see if it makes all right mit my mother sometimes it is by the moonlight i see on her but more often it is by a candle glimmer hannah broke the subdued tone of her narrative to add in a lower more confiding note it is mit me now that when i see a candle on light i have a sharp sadness
Pretty soon de weather is more better, and comes a man, trampling through the snow, to tell my mother that her husband can't come home just yet. He is drowned in the sea. When he see how it is mid my mother, and mid me, and the little children, the water stands in his eyes, ya, yeah. and he go on through the snow, three, four mile nearer on the city, to the big castle where lived the lady what own all the land, and see come in sleigh, mit four horsen and big robes of fur and yingling bells. See see on my mother, and she go quick away, but so soon as it can see come again, and she do on my mother a white robe, heavy mit lace, most beautiful, and white stockings of silk, and white slippers, broidered mit pearlin. She leaf my mother's hair as I fixed it, in two braids, but she put a wreath of flowers, white and green, just like the real ones. Is few real flowers in Sweden in winter. Anyway, these were like the flowers a girl what gets married should to wear. Then, my lady, she send her sleigh, that all the people should come, and see on the so brave woman, but couldn't to bring a fear on her little children. And the people, they make admiration on my mother, they say it is the prettiest they ever see it, and they make pity that she couldn't to see it herself. She paused and breathed deeply. <sighs> I wish she could have seen those slippers. And did no one tell you that you were a wonderful little girl? Oh, well, I've our eight-year-old. But what became of you all? My lady took us home in her sleigh, mit. I want to stay mit my mother, but she say I shall come to keep care on the children, that they don't cry. And they don't cry, and they laugh mit the yingling bells. The need was on me strong, but I don't cry before my lady. She were a great dame, but go into court mit the queen. She sent men, and they do my mother in a coffin, and carry her to a little chapel house in cemetery, and in the spring, when the snow is gone, they bury her. My lady, she put a white stone mid my mother's name, and some poetry. I can't to say it good in English, but it says, The strength in the heart of her poor is the hope of Sweden. And then did your aunt come? Yeah, my lady, she wrote on my father's brother, but var in America. She say we can to stay mid her, but my uncle he send his wife, and we come back mid her on America, and that is all how I came to be here. End of When Hannah Var Eight Yar Old by Catherine Peabody Gerling Read by Maria Casper